Welcome to Wednesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thanks for joining us again today. And we're going to continue in our series entitled No Condemnation. And we are learning how to get victory in this life, how to overcome the attacks of the enemy. Of course, he's got strategies and devices that we've already looked at. And we've already looked at truths and realities in the New Covenant as believers that will help overcome and counteract those strategies and devices that He arrays against us. Now again, Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That is a reality. If you may not feel like it, may not look like it, but that is a reality. And of course, we don't live by what we feel we live by faith. We live by what we know, and we know what we know from the Word of God in the New Covenant. Now, I want to go to the book of Ephesians today. We've been talking about this week heavily, been emphasizing the fact that we are in Christ Jesus, that we are identified with and in Christ. We found out yesterday in Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, that we're to be rooted and built up in Jesus, in Christ, and established in the faith, as we were taught, abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. So we're to continually see ourselves in Christ. That's the way God sees us. That's the way things really are in the spiritual realm. But see, you have to have your minds renewed. You have to have your perspective altered and changed so that you see yourself in Christ and not uh, separated apart and outside of Him. And see, that's where the place of no condemnation is, is in Christ. We'll see ourselves free of guilt, shame, and condemnation the more we see ourselves in Christ. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number, we'll, we'll just go back to verse number 5, because these, these are scriptures we've already looked at, but we're going to bring them in and talking about getting victory in life. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Even when we were dead in trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Now he inserts that right there because again, this is all a work of grace. It's not, it's not God's work and our works. No, it's God's work alone. God did it. God finished it. God completed this work of redemption in Christ Jesus. And then he provided it and gave it to us free of charge by grace. Again, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says uh, that those who receive the abundance of God's grace and His free gift of righteousness will reign as kings in life. The Amplified says reign as kings in this life. How are we supposed to reign as kings in life and not be reigned over, not be ruled over and dominated by the powers of darkness in this realm? It's only by receiving those two things right there, the abundance of God's grace. You have to recognize and know that it's by God's grace and His grace alone that you are forgiven. There's no condemnation that you are walking free and delivered from Satan's dominion and authority in this realm and the free gift of righteousness if we could earn righteousness or earn right standing with God earn forgiveness of sin then it would not be a free gift would it no it's a free gift because we could never do enough to earn it so God in his abundant great awesome grace and love for us unconditional love provided a way for us to be back in right standing with God and to reign and rule as kings in life. See, again, that's the way God created mankind to begin with. If you look back at the Genesis account, chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, you'll see that reality that God created man in his own image and likeness, and then he gave him basically a governorship and delegated authority and dominion over all the earth, over everything that creeped and moved on the earth. And see, that was God's original plan there. It wasn't until after Satan set up man and, uh, and, and, and tempted him and, and man ate off that forbidden fruit. He, he disobeyed God. And then Satan got him under condemnation at that point. And we see immediately that Adam, who was normally fellowshipping with God confidently with God in the garden in the cool of the day, he was running away from God. And he was trying to make fig leaves to cover up his own nakedness and shame. 
But see, God, you know, Adam never really took responsibility for that. Now, I don't know what would happen if he were to take a responsibility. He never really took responsibility. He blamed, he blamed the, the woman who God gave him, you know. He blamed even God. You know, he said, the woman who you gave me. In other words, it was the woman's fault and it was God's fault. It wasn't my fault. He never took responsibility. But you know what? Jesus came and took responsibility for mankind's sin. And it was all because of a work of grace. And we have to see that right there. We have to see that this over coming life be living in a life of no condemnation free of guilt and shame is all a work of God's grace it has nothing to do with any of our own self effort or self works and righteousness right standing with God is a free gift so verse number six goes on to say and he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus now notice that God didn't just you know, raise us up with Jesus out of the empty tomb and then just kind of deposit us back in the earth. No, God's plan all along was for us to have a place by Him. That is abundant grace right there. That is overflowing grace. The fact that we're in the lowest spot and God elevated us and launched us into the heavenly realm and then sat us down at his own right hand, giving us joint seating with Jesus. Now, we've already studied this to some degree, but I want you to see this again. This is a reality right here. How in the world, why is it that we can be seated in heavenly places? Why is that so significant right there? See, because seated in heavenly places at God's right hand, that's a place where kings rule and reign. That's a place where we should be ruling and reigning. But how is it that, what, what's, the, what's the big deal? What's the significance of us being seated at God's own right hand in heavenly places? Well, again, over in Hebrews chapter 1, I'm just going to remind you of these things. We've read them before. But, you know, we need to get these down on the inside of us. But Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, Who, talking about Jesus, being the brightness of His glory, the glory of God, and the express image of the person of God, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself, when He had by Himself, in other words, Jesus did it by himself. He didn't need our help. He didn't get our help. He didn't, he didn't have to have our help to complete this work of redemption. He said, when he had by himself purged our sins. What does that mean, purged? Cleansed them. Took them out of the way. Wiped them out like they never existed before. He purged our sins. And he, then he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, again, that is powerful right there. It was only after the finished work, after God, Jesus completely purged our sins, that he sat down at the right hand of God. And you know what? That is why we're seated at his own right hand. In the same seat with Jesus is because our sins have been purged. The work has been done. We have entered into the rest of God. And again, over in uh, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10 and uh, verse number 12, it says, but this man, talking about Jesus, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, in other words, that one sacrifice was enough to do for all time. He says that one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down, he sat down at the right hand of God. And see, that's where we are with him in heavenly places. Why? Because our sins have been wiped out, purged forever. And God has made us to sit together in heavenly places at His own right hand. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Here it is again. It says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the, mat, uh, of the throne of God. Notice that He endured the cross. Not because of his own sin. He endured the punishment, the condemnation of the cross. And he's despised the guilt and the shame associated with it. And then he sat down. See, being seated in heavenly places means we are forgiven and 
released from all condemnation, guilt, and shame. There's no reason for us to hang our head. There's no reason for us to kick ourselves and condemn ourselves anymore. There's no reason for us to run away from God anymore and separate ourselves away from God. Why? Because the work of Jesus was enough. It was sufficient. It was more than enough. And He took care of our sins and purged them out like they never existed. We can come to the throne of grace blamelessly. God sees us blameless and holy in His sight. And see, that's why we can take our heavenly seat. We are entering into the finished work of Jesus. And that's what He's talking about in Ephesians chapter 2. Well, let's go back to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, and go to chapter 1 real quick. Ephesians chapter 1, and notice this. I don't think we've looked at these. I am doing the same series currently in our church, Church 316, uh, at, on Sunday mornings and Tuesday. And so some of the things I say, I can't remember when I said what, but it won't hurt us if we've said these things before. But I want you to notice here in verse number 6 and 7 of Ephesians 1, it says, To the praise of the glory of His grace. We've been talking about that. By which He has made us accepted in the Beloved. It was by the work of grace, the finished work, that we are accepted in the Beloved. We don't have to work to get God's acceptance. We don't have to work our way into acceptance and favor with God. Why? Because of the finished work of Jesus. Because of us being in Christ. Notice right there. We have already been accepted in the Beloved. Why are we accepted in the Beloved? Because God accepted the finished work of Jesus. And He made Him to sit together or sit down at His right hand. And you know what? He has accepted us. How do we know we're accepted? How do we know we're in favor with God? Because He has given us a place at His own right hand. That seat in heavenly places. See, the right hand seat, that, that, is, that is so important right there that we know it is specifically at the right hand of God where Jesus is. Because that's a place of divine favor. That's not something you merited or earned. That's something that God gave you freely in Christ through His grace. Notice verse 7. In Him, in Christ, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His free grace. Notice we, already, we have redemption through His blood. That meaning the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sin. Sins being purged. Sins being cleansed. No condemnation. Being released from condemnation is the centerpiece of this new covenant right here that we're talking about. God said, I will no longer remember your sins. What is He doing? He's remembering the finished work of Jesus. That's why He accepts you. That's why He's made you to sit together in heavenly places. And you know what that heavenly place is? It's a place, first of all, where we can draw near to God. It's a place of access to the Father. We have perfect access to the throne of grace. 24-7, 365 days a year, all the time. And you know what? That's also a place of authority. A place of authority over the realm of darkness, over Satan and all the defeated, disarmed, and dethroned principalities and powers that are trying to come against us. We are seated above those. And that is all the time I've got for today. But we're going to pick it right up, right there tomorrow, for some really good stuff. Join us again tomorrow. If you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org, and we will see you tomorrow.